says things in the morning today is the morning edition what's up Tom Tom is here it took me a while to get loaded here today to get the uh, video loaded I had to upgrade I had to upgrade my um, what do you call this my Google Chrome I had to upgrade it I had to get beta I'm really confused on what to do with these computer things. And the way I learn is I read them. I read what it's selling me. But we're good. Sweet for the working man. How are you guys doing today? Do you have your coffee? Are you, are you on your way? Are you doing your thing? I've been up since about 4 o'clock in the morning. And I have a lot of things to accomplish today. I got a bunch of emails that I have to take care of. People who need my responses. People who need their deadlines answered. People who need their work finished. But I'm very happy to announce today to you. That's right, it's an announcement. I bought this cup off of Threadless.com. We have an Aya Comics store where you can buy shirts and things. But I just created something over the weekend that now you guys can go to. I have a t-shirt store, famous cartoonist t-shirt store, where I have a whole bunch of designs for t-shirts up there. <laughs> Lower the music a little bit so maybe I don't have to shout. But I have a t-shirt store on Threadless, artbaltazar.threadless.com, and the link is in the video here. So I got three people watching me, and you're all listening. Some coffee for me and you. Oh, yeah. But I've been working hard on getting some t-shirts done. And I'm very proud of them, as I have a lot of t-shirts going up. And almost every day, I tried to, uh, I started working on it Friday. I finally launched it yesterday. I haven't sold any shirts yet. But I'm, uh, I don't think they sold. They might have, but I don't know when I will know. But I'm real proud of the t-shirt store. And my kids already looked at it, and they want to buy hoodies. And I asked them what logo, what art they wanted on it. And they want the Electric Milk logo, which is really cool. Because that's my own company. I had the company since I was in college. It's, I'm incorporated. It's my art studio. And that's the logo and company that the kids know. They know what it is. They know daddy works there. They know mommy works there. They hear us talking all about electric milk all the time. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to order some hoodies for my kids. They want to wear hoodies. I thought they just want to wear t-shirts. I'm a long t-shirt kind of guy. I like the long sleeve t-shirts, which are really cool. If you're drinking coffee with me, here's another sweet. Ah. But I had to, I had to get Google Chrome beta today. My camera would not work. I was a struggle. I was like, I have to be able to talk to people. I have to be able to go live for you people, for for me to perform this morning show. It's something I need to do. So hopefully, check out the T-shirt shop. I'm gonna try to upload. Um, I don't know, it's a, it's a tough goal. I want to upload a new design every day. Maybe that'll be something. Maybe um, maybe it'll be uh, 
every day, every other day, maybe a few times a week, but I definitely want to get new designs as much as possible. So I have a whole bunch of ideas that I want to put on shirts. And I'm going to dive into my powers and actions character, my, my, my superhero characters. And most of the stuff that's going to be on my own t-shirt site are all the characters owned by me. So, um, not that I'm singling out myself, but like the Action Cat stuff will be on the oh yeah comic site. And but I probably put a, I'll probably make some new Wolf Boy shirts and put Patrick up there. So you'll be able to get some stuff. People are talking, cool man. What's up, Johnny Logan? Says morning. Good to see you too, sir. Congrats on a shirt store. Thank you, man. I've been wanting to get this shirt store done since 2015. And I didn't understand what it was. I thought it was some kind of elaborate kind of uh, design shirt where I designed my design over the whole thing. I wasn't sure. I didn't realize it was just an emblem on the front, like the old-fashioned T-shirt places that you would get the iron-ons. That's kind of what it's like. But I didn't have time to get into it. And... I established a, an artist store with Threadless back in 2015, and then when when I first launched my store, then it was called Oh Yeah Comics. But then recently, Oh Yeah Comics started their store, and I was wondering why didn't you guys call it? Why didn't we call it Oh Yeah Comics? And it turns out that I already had the name, <laughs> so I had to give the name to my own self. It's weird. I was sitting on the name of my store. So I gave it back to the store. Now we have Aya Comics. Now we have uh, Art Baltazar. And we also have uh, Blind Will Studios, which is Franco. So we have three t-shirt shops. I was going to say, three. we have three t-shirt shops right now that are all individually run. And uh, the Art Baltazar dot threadless one is me. And I just want to do all my own designs, all my own characters, uh, just associated with me and Electric Milk is my art studio. So that will be real cool. So if you want Action Cat, he'll be on the Aya comic site. But I'll be designing a lot of those designs as well. So I'm spreading out. So, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's kind of uh, it's kind of awesome. So if a character doesn't, if you don't know, like, powers and action, my superheroes, they're more specifically me. Swig for the working man. Uh, yeah, and you can get an electric milk coffee mug right now. I'm going to be adding more, more merchandise on it. Right now I have the designs up there, but I'm going to be adding more, like, different shirts and styles and they're going to make leggings and shoes and socks and purses and stuff. It's going to be crazy. All right. Tom Rux says, good morning. If they get back to work. Yeah, man, go fix those cars. Go do your thing. Richie Sandoval, my cousin's here. Chris wants the same shirt. Yeah, man. Chris Sandoval's part of Electric Milk. So he's in there. And a hoodie. Yeah, you got to do it, man. And right now the shirts are 15 bucks, And that's... Uh, that's really good. That's almost my price. <laughs> so go get them for right now. You can buy for thirteen or uh, fifteen bucks. I think for only for the next six days or something, or this week or something like that. And um, that's gonna be cool. Oh, oh, hey, cuz. Good morning. Oh, good morning to you, cousin. And Vinx is here. What's up, Vinx? Oh yeah, man. You're a good man, sir. I still love your music. I want to go live again this weekend. Uh, but this Saturday and Sunday was all digital. I added a lot of stuff to my website. I got my new books on my website and working on a t-shirt shop. I didn't get to do a, I didn't get to do a, um, what do you call it? A live painting show. Vink says I'm good. Yeah, man, I'm good, man. Sell my shirts. Yeah. Can I put the design up there? The links, uh, or the links, the Vink's, the Vink's, uh, two drink minimum. I could put that on a shirt and sell it, man. Yeah, that'll be cool. You're a one funny guy. Big hello from Albuquerque. Oh, thanks, Raphael. Oh, I know Raphael. He's a good man. I got something coming to you, but I have to finish it, Raphael. You and Lorelai. It's something you'll, you're going to like. You can hang on your wall. I have to get it done. Jennifer Wilcox is here. I'm trying to get my son on. He's a huge fan, and I'm, I'm on a walk, but my husband is trying to get on. Well, my live streams, my live shows like this, uh, they go live now and I talk for whatever, about an hour or so until I can't talk no more. But then you can listen. You, they're not, they stay on my Facebook feed so you can go back and, and watch them again. You can watch them again while I, uh, like it's like a rerun, a replay. It's always up there. 
Vink says, yes, man. Oh, cool, man. I'll put your shirt up there, sir. That'll be real cool. And, um, yeah, people will, <laughs> people will buy it. And they'll wear it proudly. We'll see how many I sell. So far, um, hopefully I sell some. But I used to print shirts, you know, in the late 90s, 95, 96. But I would have to print them and carry them with me and bring them to conventions and sell them to you. Now it's a little different where people people buy them online and they come right to your house. And I was trying to explain to my mom yesterday um, that I got a t-shirt shop. And she said, well, how do I get them? And I said, you have to go online. And she said, well, oh, okay. And that means she's not going to do it. But I said, it's like buying stuff on Amazon, but now you're shopping on a t-shirt site. But you also get to pick your color and the style and the size and the material. And it's really cool. I'm really digging it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some more. And it's so weird that I want to do so much t-shirt that it's taking me away from my real work. So I got to be careful. <laughs> and um, well, let's see. You guys are talking. Oh yeah, man, you'll be, you'll be back. You'll be back, Jennifer, to see your kids. Yeah, tell them that if I'm on there, if I should be still on there, I talk usually about 40 minutes or an hour. Brian Petrowski, my cousin, says, "What's up?" Yeah, you're awesome. Raphael sounds good, man. Take a swig of coffee. Jennifer Wilcox, hello. This is Garrett. I'm a huge fan. I love playing the Titans. Oh, dang. Oh, you must be uh, Jennifer's son, Garrett. Yeah, Garrett, keep drawing. Keep reading comics. Do your thing, man. It's fun. The paintings behind me, you see, I painted those. And um, just got to do your stuff, man. But thanks for being a fan. It's always good to hear from you guys. And Vink says, my people will buy it. Your peoples will buy it. There's more than, more than many. There's many peoples from around the globe. Worship and love Vinx's music and his two drink minimum live shows. And uh, I'll put it up there, man. I'll load it up today. That'll be my next shirt I put up. I put a new one up today called Cora de Flora from Bora Bora. She's a little coconut girl and she's watering flowers. And that's part of her comic. That's a, that's a panel from the comic book she's in. So that's cool. Oh, yeah, Jennifer, my son is on with me now. I'm going to take a drink of coffee for the working man. You guys are awesome. And um, Jennifer says, ask him a question. Yeah, ask me a question, Garrett. What's your favorite series you have done? Oh, my favorite comic book series I've done? I love doing every series, and I really like the newest thing I'm working on. I'm working on about five things right now. I'm working on Drew and Jot. I'm working on Gilbert. But I got to say, I got this. Listen to the guy. I got this. That's inspiration for all of us. I got this. But I love working on a bunch of things. I'm working on Drew and John and Gilbert. I'm working on Archimaniacs. I got to draw some of that stuff today. I'm working on some Super Pet books. I always, But I always love when I work on my own characters. And I love working on um, my superheroes. My powers in action book. I worked on... I created those guys when I was, in, when I was 16 years old in high school. So to work on the superheroes... Is something special to me. I love it. And even Wolf Boy, Patrick the Wolf Boy and Gilbert, I created those probably before you were born. In the year 2000, I created a lot of characters, a lot of monsters in 2001, 2002. And so um, I love doing everything, but some of my favorite stuff was Patrick the Wolf Boy. Cray Babies was my very first comic. And I love working on Powers in Action. It's so good. I love working on all this stuff. Sweet for the working man. I like this music going. My son makes this music. There's also a link. You can listen for free. It's on SoundCloud. Just click on it and you can hear it. It's pretty cool. And when I'm not when I'm not streaming, live viewing and showing like this, I still listen to the music when I draw. It's kind of cool. Because <laughs> it surrounds the room. It's all around me right now. Kevin Bixby said, oh, yeah, the working man. <laughs> That's true. Eric C. Martin's waving. What's up, Eric? Eric C. Martin, I watch your uh, your singing shows. Those are cool, man. You have a real good voice. And it's odd to see your videos. It looks like it would be silly. But then when you listen, like, wow, this guy could sing. But you're singing in a closet with Funko Pops. 
which I think is really cool. <laughs> but your uh, your voice is sweet, man. Yeah. It's like, you ain't listening to Cannibal Corpse? I don't know what the Cannibal Corpse is. Is it core or course? But I don't know what that is, but I have to check it out. Jennifer Wilcox says, yeah, Super Pets are awesome. Oh, that's Garrett. That must be Garrett talking. Yeah, man, I'm making more. I'm making about, about what's six plus four? Eight, ten? I'm making ten more so far. And probably some after that, because next year, in, there's going to be a Super Fat movie. I don't know if it's 2021 or 22, but there's going to be a movie, and I, hopefully they look like my guys. I'm not sure what they look like yet, but I will be one of the first ones to find out what they look like. Because I think the books I'm doing right now are going to go along with the movie. I'm not sure. Whew, I'm running out of breath. Plus, I'm talking loud so you guys can hear the music. <laughs> Raphael says, I'm going to do another portrait of you. Because <laughs> now a couple of years more mature and look more excited. And life <laughs> with life shows your face. Yeah, man. Um... My life is kind of uh, exciting and kind of weird, and the weird thing about these trying times and these Christ times of crisis, I like it. I think I'm flourishing. I'm doing okay, and my life has continued. My deadlines are still here. Um, my life has not slowed down. If anything, it picked up my work-wise, but now my kids are always here, but my schedule is so weird that... I'm awake until I'm until I'm not awake and I sleep and I wake up when I'm not tired. So I don't have any hours of the day what's supposed to feel like today. Like in the morning, I just about nine nine o'clock. I ate I ate breakfast, but I'm so used to eating dinner for breakfast. So I had ribs and potatoes. <laughs> I had barbecue ribs for breakfast with coffee. So it was really weird. So. I don't know, and I, but I've been up since about 3 30, 4 o'clock in the morning, and I woke up and did my thing, and it's just how it goes, and it feels, I know it's Monday, but it doesn't feel like Monday, because I've been working constantly, and yesterday I took a break to watch some uh, Hurt and Horror movies, we're watching that network, Fossum, which the movies are real hurting, and they just throw commercials no matter what, there's no, there's no break in the movie when they show commercials, a character could be in mid-sentence, and all of a sudden there's a there's an ad for soap. <laughs> That's what happens. So, uh, yeah, in other words, I'm feeling good. And then, um, Raphael, when I saw you a few years ago, I was in a weird spot. I was in a weird spot in my brain and my heart. Everything was weird. But I got over that stuff, and I mean, I'm the man you are. you see right now. And I learned that I learned that when you wake up and do what you love every day, let that be the focus of your life and everything will be fine. And if there's a problem, don't let it be a problem. Let it be a, a, a challenge. You can get over it. You can get over anything. And that's what I learned. So maybe that's why I look different now and a little bit more happier. I'm trying to grow a beard for you too. I'm trying to make it a little different. Make add some variety. Sweet for the word of it. Uh, did I mention you could get these cups, these mugs on Threadless? You can get this one on the Aya Comic site, and I got an electric milk mug from my own art studio. Let me see. Your comments are getting away from me again because I keep going on and talking. Oh, Eric C. Martin says, "Remember the band in Ace Ventura." I do remember. I might have saw that once. I'm, Jim Carrey makes me uncomfortable. I liked him in The Mask, and I liked him in the one where he had the camera on him the whole time. Trevor Truman? Truman. I like Truman. I love him in that, and when he makes faces and bends his body, it's weird. But I get that he's a brilliant comedian, but I'm uncomfortable watching him, unless it's The Mask. I like The Mask. Stephen Lightman says, hello, my handsome Dapper Dan. Oh, shucks. <laughs> yeah. Is that Garrett? You're so excited. Yeah, I mean, you have to be excited. Be excited for things. I'm making a lot of books for you guys, which is going to be, um, 
which is going to be real cool. Excited. I'm excited too to, to show you a lot of things. I'm excited to put my characters on T-shirts. That's the thing that's blowing my mind right now. And um, Kevin Bixby likes the hat. The hat is fantastic. Thanks, man. This is a, um, a Santana hat, Carlos Santana. And he makes a line of hats. And they're really cool because they have a they have a design in the inside of the hat too. They have paintings on the inside. It's just really cool. You can see it really nice. And I just like it. They fit really well. They're well crafted. This is half material and half leather and nice brim. There's a place I go to in Galena that has hats. It's called Hollywood Hats, I think. And I go there to buy hats. And I go there and I just I just buy a bunch of them. I know I'm going to spend a hundred dollars when I go there. Oh, it's getting away again. Let's see. Eric C. Martin says, I'm glad to hear it. Cool, man. You gave me a heart. So something that something that I said to you gave me a heart. So thank you for your support, sir. And then <laughs> Johnny Logan says, I have to ask, did you name Patrick the Wolf after Butch Patrick, who plays Eddie Muster, who happens to be a werewolf kid, or also on TV? It seems like it would be, but... Originally, Patrick the Wolf Boy was based off my brother, whose name is Patrick. And originally, Patrick was going to be Patrick the Jungle Boy. And then we it was weird, because at first I had him with the sharp teeth, but I had him with a loincloth, like a tiger thing. And then it turned into Patrick the Vampire Boy, because I thought he looked like a vampire with the teeth. Then he turned into Patrick the Wolf Boy, because I wanted to draw him fuzzy. So it was, it was a bit of a... There was a bit of evolution to the character. And my brother at the time was living in the in Guatemalan jungle and sleeping in mosquito nets. And that's kind of where the character came from. So in the first issue of Patrick the Wolf Boy, he actually meets Patrick the Jungle Boy. But I drew the character to look more like my brother with curly hair and glasses. And um, But that was a good question. But it seems like it because during that time I was working on a Munsters comic. And I got to know Eddie Munster in Maryland. I got to meet them and hang out with them and have dinner with them and actually become friends with them. And Marilyn Munster, um, her name was Pat, Pat Priest. And I knew her as Pat and Eddie Munster's name's Butch. So I got to eat dinner with them and go to conventions with them. So it was cool. And there was a time where Eddie Munster was at my table signing Patch the Wolf Boy books, <laughs> which was cool. And... Our deal was if I ever got a cartoon, he would do the growl. Rawr. So we'll see what happens, you know. And then Jen, or Garrett says, are you allowed to say what the new Super Pet books are about? I am not. I am i don't even think I'm allowed to say I'm working on them, so I could say that much. But I, um, I'm working on all the new guys, all the good ones, all the books that you want to, uh, want to read about. But there's also... A character or two that I created that's in the books so that might give you a little hint but I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say what they are yet but they're gonna be good they're fun right now and they're fighting bad guys and it's cool Bobby Molinaire <laughs> Marmalejo says I look good looking good sir you too man I see your pictures on Facebook swig for the worker man D Brad says hey all right I have to I have my coffee Ready to swing. Yeah, man, let's do it. One, two, three. Swig for the working man. Oh, my coffee's still warm, but it's getting to the point where it's going to start cooling off. Scott Hall says, oh, yeah. That's the same Scott Hall I know from Detroit, right? I remember you. You're a dad now and stuff. Raphael says, I will add the beard. You are a wonderful guy. And we love you and wish you only the best. Sounds like you got started, too. Yeah, man. Thanks, Raphael. I want to make it back to Albuquerque again. Because now we, we have to go for another tour on the Better Call Saul sites and uh, El Camino. But, man, yeah, you and Lorelai live in my heart. And I have a video that I have to get out of my iPad about our tour. But... I got to figure out the storage on my iPad. Every time I go to save it, it won't let it out. But I'm working on it, man. Just It'll be online soon. It'll be on YouTube once I get there. And this little beard thing comes and goes. I was clean shaven for a while, but we'll see what happens. I was going to grow, 
growing the quarantine one, but it didn't quite look right. Made me look um, made me look like I didn't care. So we're gonna go with something cool. And then Kevin Bixby says, "My parents live in Galena. I know Hollywood Hats. Yeah, man, great place. I like it there because I walk. That's where I found these Carlos Santana hats. And um, when I walk in there." Uh, the guy's happy because he remembers me and he knows I'm going to buy stuff. I don't go in there to, I go in there to shop and buy stuff. So it's fun, man. I just love, I just love that stuff. I'm going to have to sniffle. Hold on. All right, I'm back. I had a sniffle. I couldn't do that on screen. <laughs> Swig for the worker, man. Oh, yeah. Ronnie's here. Artie Art. What's up, Ronald? Ronda, your aunt, Ronnie Dandy. It's Eric C. Martin. Hmm, you gave me an idea. Oh, no. You didn't. Not one of my ideas. I said, I think I'm going to draw a cartoon of you surrounded by some of your characters. Yeah, you should. I, I look at your cartoons. You're drawing that squirrel for Belky Studios. That's some cool, cool cartooning you got going on. And Raphael's awesome, too. Yeah, thank you, too, Raphael. Hey, you're going to like the video. I got to get it done. Let's see if I can show it right now. I'll show a piece. I'm going to show you a piece of it. There's not. I don't know if there will be any sounds. But I got a video. It's in my iPad. If I could see it. I'm going to show a little bit of preview. But now I'm that guy on his phone while people are trying to watch me. But it's cool. Here it is. Oh, wait. That wasn't the button. Ah, oh, see? My iPad's stuttering now. But I'm making a video of um, a Breaking Bad video, which has, which has um, pictures of me and, but I'm going to lower the volume. I'm going to lower the volume on it. But here it is. You can see it a little bit. See, it's a video I'm making of our Albuquerque trip. And here's the... Um, Here's the videos, here's the here's the photos of the video and all the shots we went to. And when I went to Albuquerque with my dad, um, we met Raphael and Lorelei. And the first thing I wanted to do uh, is see all the sights of the Breaking Bad. So here's us in the hotel. And I wanted to see all the sights of the Breaking Bad show. So Lorelei and Raphael took us to all of these landmarks. All of these places. There's Walter White's house. They took us to all of these places. I just have to figure out how to get this video out of my iPad because I have to narrate a little more. But there's the car wash. It was real cool. So they they had taken us around this whole place. And we were supposed to be at a... Um, there's Raphael in the middle. We were supposed to be at a Vietnam reunion thing and it seems to me like Raphael and my dad would rather go on this tour <laughs> than go sit with all the vets which was really fun and this is the video I made I have to put some more narration um, and maybe some music in the background or something but that's me at Poros Romanos and it was such a thrill to go to this to go to this Albuquerque tour and there's Raphael give me bunny ears there they are. There are the men, the Vietnam veterans, Raphael and my dad. And there's Lorelai and Raphael. And we were sitting in the booth that Walter White sat in. And there's Jesse Pinkman's house. It was just really cool to see, to be in Albuquerque and see all of these places. And not only that, but have lifelong friends afterwards. And we just spent two days driving around. And after it was all said and done, uh, Raphael, Lorelai, you're very special to me and I I love you guys and I can't wait if you're ever in Chicago you can come over I'll barbecue stuff and we'll sit on my deck and we'll drink we'll drink beer and have some steaks and these are all the cool places that we had so it was pretty cool Jesse Pinkman's apartment where Jane died oops spoiler yeah she she doesn't make it past season two <laughs> but that's me not trespassing so it was a pretty cool video yeah, look at that. So this is pretty. It's pretty all right, right? There's Gustavo Frank's chicken farm. So it's pretty cool. So I think you guys get it. 
I'm gonna do that. Oh, there's Raphael in his house. Let's go back. But it was pretty cool. And um, it was pretty cool to um, hang out with them and drive around and see all the sights in Albuquerque and see where Walter White did his did his bidding. It was pretty cool. And D. Brad asked, "Am I streaming Gilbert tonight?" I'm not sure. It's possible. Um, I just got my camera working again, so that's cool. So I might be uh, I might be up there streaming tonight. I think that's Garrett again. Are you you are my favorite artist? Thanks, man. I have all the Tiny Titans comics, and I own the Oh Yeah comics, too. I like how you do the characters' proportions. Oh, thanks, man. I like to draw my characters where they they have big heads and little bodies, and they look like kids almost. And I do that so they look vulnerable. They look like um, they look like they look you're on their side when you could identify with the kid or the character. And uh, you could pretend like they're you. So I have a, a, a knack for that. I, when I was a kid growing up, I loved, I loved characters like Woody Woodpecker and Tom and Jerry and McGilla Gorilla and, and all of these uh, Hanna Barbera characters like Ricochet Rabbit and Squidly Dilly. So when I draw, I draw a lot like that. But I really like the, the characters with the big heads and small bodies and long tails. And, and I like making characters that are not human. And once in a while, you have to make a human type. Like, Wolf Boy's kind of human. But I like making characters like Action Cat or Grimace or, or Meteor Mite. Somebody, characters who are other than human. Because then, then everyone could, any kind of person, no matter what color you are, no matter where you're from, no matter what country you live in, you could, you could identify with that character. And it could be someone's favorite character, no matter what the character looks like and no matter what you look like. So... That's what I really like. And then Raphael says, thanks. That's a great we have to go visit for sure. Yeah, man. Do you like that video? I got to finish it up. But you guys, will, you guys will like it. But I just love making characters all the time. Look at Sweet for the working man. This, this song is called Rhodium, which I really like. Hey, yeah, you guys are awesome. Hopefully on this weekend, I'll be painting some more paintings. I'd like to. I want to try to get, um, I got some special requests. Looks like my friend Andrew Clark wants me to paint something. So I might, um, I like to paint something live and you guys can see. I don't normally take requests for paintings because then I'll, I get a whole bunch of requests and I can never get them done. A lot of times when people would ask me to do a drawing or a commission piece, it would take me like two years to get to it. And <laughs> I don't always like to do that. But today, hopefully, it'll get warm up. Because I was sitting watching a Hurt movie. We are watching a movie called um, The Revenge of the Killer Leeches, I think. The Giant Leeches? But it was such a bad movie. It was an awful movie, but it wasn't wor it wasn't worse than that Planet or that Banana Splits movie. That Banana Splits movie is still one of the worst movies ever. And the other movie I thought was awful was House of a Thousand Corpses. That's awful too. But <laughs> Fernando says, "Hey man, looking good in black, very artsy." Thanks, man. I got my Carlos Santana hat, my black turtleneck, and actually this this coat is a it's like a dark navy blue, but but I got to do the art thing. It's Monday morning. You know. Sweet for the working man. My black mug too. Alright. Well, Garrett asks, do you ever do Marvel Comics or just DC? Well, I love Marvel Comics. There's Beta Ray Bill behind me right there. But I work for DC Comics. So right now, I'm doing work for DC Comics. So it's hard to do Marvel Comics because DC Comics actually asked me if I could just... Not do stuff or Marvel, <laughs> but I, but I talk to both companies all the time. So you never know. One day, one day whoever's lucky will get me. You know, maybe, maybe I'll have some extra energy that day and I'll work for both. You never know. But right now I'm trying to finish up a DC Comics book, and that's hard right now. I got 40 pages left of Archimaniacs, and I have to. Um, I'll probably do some of that today. 
and I was going to see if it's warm out, I'll go outside and write on my patio, right on my deck. Because yesterday when I was watching this killer leeches from outer space, giant leech movie, it was so bad. It was an awful movie, but it was still funny. But as we're watching the movie, it was snowing outside. My yard was getting filled with snow and giant snow drops coming down. I don't know if it was snow or frozen rain, but something weird was happening yesterday. I was watching a leech movie. <laughs> was the leech movie the new? Oh, it was the new one. And I, I heard it was a public domain movie, but there was a new one. It was horrible, stupid. It was stupid, terrible, but I couldn't help but watch it. It didn't make me uncomfortable like that um, uh, Banana Splits movie did. That was awful, and I was getting angry. But this one didn't make me angry. It just I was laughing at it. So that was cool. And Fernando Furry, I love your live DJ streams, man. I rock out when you when you put them on. I just blast them wherever I am at, on my iPad, in the kitchen, or at my computer when I'm working. It's cool, man. I love when you do that. Keep doing those DJ the live shows. Those are cool. And uh, Andrew said, really looking forward to the painting. Thanks, man. I maybe I'll paint this this Saturday. Saturday, Sunday. I got to see what's happening. And um. I got to see what's happening with um, this weekend, but usually I'm okay, but that's still like eight days away. I don't know what's happening right now, <laughs> but, but I'll get there. And uh, Eric, Eric C. Martin says, I remember seeing A House of a Thousand Corpses while in Iraq, so disappointed. Man, that was the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. I hated that movie, and I was at a um, Halloween party, and I couldn't, couldn't leave or something, but I tried to get through that movie, but it was horrible. I didn't like it. I'll never watch it again. I'd rather choose something else, choose something painful, than watch that movie again. So I want to, I can't wait for Archimaniacs. Man, I can't wait to finish that book, man. I've been working on that for way too long. Well, normally, I'm used to working on comics. Excuse me, which are either like a short gag, or like 20 pages at a time. But with Archimaniacs, it's a 120-page story. So it's hard to work on a whole bunch. I work on a whole thing, but it's hard to get them pages done to turn in because I work on some, then I work on some here, and I jump around the book trying to get it all done. But I got the first, like, 80 pages turned in or something. But that'll happen, man. Furry says, thanks, buddy. Love you back. Yeah, you're awesome, Furry. Miss you, man. Your kids are getting big. We're dads now. We're old guys. <laughs> we have gray hair and we wear black clothes because it looks cool. <laughs> Eric says, not surprised that turning a chapter of my child with banana splits into a bunch of bloodthirsty murdering furries would end up being the dumpster. That was so bad. They didn't need to make him the banana splits. They should have just created something because it was obvious they were trying to make the Chuck E. Cheese guys go bad. But it didn't work. It didn't work, man. And the thing that I watched was because the costumes looked so good that that's what made me want to watch. And I didn't like it. And what upsets me is that that movie's on sale at Target where I'm trying to get my books in Target, but they allow that movie to be on the Target shelves. That's awful. Going to grab, <laughs> Raphael's going to grab my cup of coffee and start your portrait. Oh, thanks, man. I'll let you know when I'm done. Enjoy your day. Well, hopefully, um, you could you could play this video back and put pause for reference, but it's uh yeah man. But thanks man, I can't wait to see your art. I love your artwork. I have your uh, card here. It's still here. This is Raphael's artwork right here. He's a Vietnam veteran, and this was a, a um a card he had. He has an art show in Albuquerque about um about his uh, paintings were on display, and he's awesome. And I remember looking at your art. And you showed me your life's work in the art. And I remember the first book being painting those paintings of like portraits and dogs and stuff. And then I saw your mermaid book and that was cool. But then when you got into this deep stuff, man, you got in your last book was all these deep paintings. And, and then I realized that's the guy. That's who the guy is. After looking through your career paintings, I realized that's the guy, you know. So I'm really inspired. I really... Really admire you, sir. So you're kind of awesome. Eric says you might like the Devil's Rejects. Um, I'm never gonna watch that. <laughs> never, and I'm never gonna watch Hellraiser. I'm not into those kind of 
creepy movies. I like movies with monsters, like Godzilla, Jaws, Frankenstein. Those kind. Of, I like when the and creature of Black Lagoon. I like when there's monsters. Alien. That's cool. But I don't like. Um, I don't like watching anything with the devil. It. I've been too close to things. That that stuff is real to me, so I don't like it. <laughs> like ghosts. Ghosts are cool, but not when. Um, not when they're possessing people. I like when they're scaring people in that possession. I don't like alien abduction. So that, like, I like, um, Close Encounters. That was cool. But anything with alien abduction, and I don't know. It scares me. It's too real for me. Replying, replying to Bill Walk. Bill Walko's here? Did I miss his comment? Oh, he was here somewhere. I miss Bill Walko. Bill Walko just drew a, a portrait for me. He drew a pinup page from my new Powers in Action series. It's gonna be cool. You're gonna love it, love the way that looks. I think. Oh, that movie was a Five Nights at Freddy's ripoff. That's what my kids said, and um, I didn't. I don't like that either. It's dumb. It's just dumb. I don't get it. How was the Clone Wars and the Big Bang Theory? Go. Oh yeah. <laughs> I watched them some more Clone Wars. Oh my God. I watched Clone Wars season two. And Clone Wars Season 1 ends. The last two episodes are kind of tight, tight together. And Clone Wars, the last episode of Season 1, the bounty hunter shows up, messes up their stuff a little bit, messes with Ad Amidala and C-3PO. <coughs> Whoop, I need a swig. But then he gets away, and it continues into Season 2. So the first episode of season two, they're chasing this bounty hunter. And then it leads to different planets and the war happens. There's a scene in, I think it was episode three or four, where there's a war scene on Geonosis that is so perfect. And it blew me away for not only the animation, but the direction, the production, the piece itself, the details and the characters. There's a scene where... Anakin is with the army, and he lights up his lightsaber. He goes, follow me. We can do this. And as he's running, he's running. As he's running, the bullets are going over him. And he's ahead of the bullets and the lasers. And the lasers don't catch up to him till he hides behind a rock with his lightsaber. And that was such a cool scene. And people were right that season one is okay. But season two is going to blow you away just, just the first... The production of it, the, the style of it, the quality of it. And I watched the first five episodes on Saturday morning. We woke up, I had coffee, and we sat down. I just put it on. We watched the first five episodes, and I realized I got to go do some work. Because I'll just watch the whole season. But it was really good. Season two really upped the game. The characters are better. The animation is better. The bad guys are cool. The style of the detail, the backgrounds, the planets... Ah, man, I'm loving it. I'm loving it so much. And I can't wait to get... I can't wait to get... Um, I can't wait to get back in and watch some more. See, Eric C. Martin says, How's of a Thousand Corpses was the worst movie you've ever seen? Yes, I hated it. It was awful. And i never seen Freddy Got Fingered. I'm not going to watch that because it doesn't look cool at all. And I watched uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space when that came out. I was, in, I was a teenager. That was worse. That was bad, too. I'll never... I don't like those kind. They're just... I don't know. It's just an awful movie. Dumb movie. I can't take it. D. Brad said, it's amazing, Raphael. Raphael, they like... My fans here like your stuff. How did you ever get selected to work for DC? Uh, Garrett and Jennifer asked. Um, DC Comics found me. They love Patrick the Wolf Boy. And my editor at DC Comics loved that comic. And then she asked if I would draw some comics for them. But with uh, some, she wanted me to draw Patch of the Wolf Boy comics for DC Comics about using their characters. And I said, yeah. And that's how Tiny, Ta Tiny Titans came to be. It was pretty cool. Eric, Eric Martin says, in all fairness, you don't seem the Bata type that would like the grisly graphic bloody. Yeah, I'm not. It's not in. I like, um, I like psychological terror. Like, one of my favorite movies is Halloween. But that's like classic horror, realistic. It has nothing to do with the devil. It's just a bad guy, a crazy guy. And I love Psycho. And I love um, 
Friday 13th, I got, it was okay. Like, I, we just watched some of that. We just watched, like, the first three Friday 13th, maybe last weekend. And they're okay because they're silly. But once it gets to Hellraiser and Killer Clowns and all these weird stuff, I'm not a, I don't like it. And I don't like the one with the guy with the chainsaw arm. I don't like that either. I know people are into it, but when there's a head in the movie that gets legs and grows around, crawls around them, I don't know. I just don't get it. I like the creepy stuff that's realistic, like, like, um, uh, like Jason, not Jason, um, Mike Myers, see, that made sense to me where he's hiding behind the bushes and driving, driving past your house real slow in a car to creepy stuff. Or like if there's a ghost or something, but I don't like demon stuff, demon or devil stuff. This is not good. I don't know. This is not good. <laughs> this is what people are saying. I like the whistling song from Gordy. Yeah, these are good songs, right? These Gordy songs are pretty cool. Swig for the worker man. You guys need to start a drinking game for that. Swig for the worker man. Oh, my cousin Trees is here. Hey, Shug. I want to welcome all my friends and family to the show. Kevin Bixby said, man, I love Killer Comes from Outer Space. Maybe because it was on Sven Gulli. And it, it maybe. Oh, did they show your art? That's cool. I I saw that movie and I just couldn't take it. I don't know. It was too silly. I don't know, man. I guess it's okay. But I saw it when I was like 18, 19 years old. I might have been in high school still, 17. And I remember going to that movie and waiting for the tickets. By when we had to stay in the line and buy tickets. And I was with a bunch of my friends. And one guy kept insisting, we got to see that, got to see that. And when we did, um, I was no longer friends with that guy after that movie. <laughs> I didn't see it anymore, which is kind of weird. I didn't like that guy no more after that. It wasn't my style. So, I don't know. If he picked Back to the Future, that would have been better. I probably still would have been friends with him. I don't know. And Eric C. says, Funko Pop actually makes killer clowns. Did he? They can keep them. I don't want them. <laughs> and then Jennifer and Garrett, I know you did Superman Family Adventures, but could you do a Batman Family Adventures? That's a good question. Actually, when I went to the DC office before I did Superman of Smallville, I went there with a Batman idea, and they said yes until I met with the next editor who wanted me to work on Superman. So yes, I was going to do a Batman book. Um, I don't want to tell you the title of it because I want to be able to use it later. And if I say it here, someone's going to take it. But, um, but it was a cool story. It was more like Batman action figures. Like, you know, when you go and see Batman in all his different outfits, it was a, it was a story like that. It was real cool. And it was going to be a, uh, like a six issue miniseries, but it just never came to be. And I'm holding on to it because so far everything I held on from DC Comics has come back later. So maybe, maybe in the future, future. But I, I really like, so I'm going to hold on to it. But yeah, I do have a Batman idea. And Eric says he might like the Evil Dead trilogy. Bruce Campbell is the one with the chainsaw hand. Yeah, the first two are bloody, but there's a lot of humor. I saw one where he's in the future. And I enjoyed that when they were fighting skeletons. That was pretty cool. But I'm not into it. That was one of my friend Chicken Boy was into that. Swig for Chicken Boy. Uh, the Army of Darkness. I watched that one, but it's just not my style, man. I just, I don't know. It's just not my speed. See, I'm more of a Star Wars, superheroes, Back to the Future, Quentin Tarantino kind of guy. <laughs> I love Tarantino stuff. I love um, Robert Rodriguez. I love these guys. I love uh, Scorsese. Yeah. I was, Casper says, I was disappointed that this did not last longer. Oh, the Superman Family? Yeah, man. I um, Superman Family Adventures, we had stories written to issue 50. Because when I first did the book, they asked me what I wanted to do with it. And I said, I want to do it like Tiny Titans, get to 50 issues. And they said, okay, we'll see what we can do. So I outlined the whole stories for 50 issues. 
but then I I found out it was going to be end at, ending at 12. So I had to wrap up everything in like issue 10, 11, 12 just to give it a solid story finish. But issue 13 was going to be, um, um, you know, the Superpower series? That actually continues where we left off with Superman Family Adventures. So Superpowers is a loose... A loose sequel to Superman Family Adventures. So if you read read them back to back, you'll see where we were going to go with that. But Superpowers continues what was going to happen with, with uh, Jor-El and Lara. But it was going to be bigger and more story-wise with um, Superman Family. And I had another pitch idea. I pitched um, that Batman series and I had another Superpowers idea. But I don't want to tell you what that is either because I'm still going to use it one day. And if I don't get to use these stories, they're going to be in my powers in action. So you're going to see them. But that was going to be good too. And Eric says, are those coffee mugs available on your website? Yes. These are available on Threadless. You go to alliacomics.threadless.com and they have these coffee mugs. And my coffee mugs for electric milk are on artbalthazar.threadless.com. So I open up a new t-shirt shop. And the links are in this video right above in the description. You'll see the links. You can buy stuff. Seems like this is getting louder. Okay, that's a little bit. <laughs> it was getting louder. I'm just shouting more. I don't know what's happening here. You have a weird question for me. Let's see. Who is your favorite Batman villain? Mine is Killer Moth. Wow, Killer Moth is awesome. You know what? I love the Joker. I love the Joker. I love Clayface. Clayface has so much potential that no one knows how to use him because he could shape shift. He could turn into people. So, but no one quite does that. The ones who does does really good with shape shifting is Mystique from the X Men. So he's pretty much like Mystique, except for he could stretch and make his arms into weapons and things like that. She can't do that. But she did it with Wolverine's claws. But I guess they're part of her still. They're like a finger. Because when they got chopped in the movie, she screamed. But Clayface is one of my favorite guys. He's going to be in Archimaniacs. I'm actually writing him in there right now. I'm working the, the thumbnail drawings. But I love the Joker. Joker's always been the guy I liked. I like Joker. I like the Riddler and Penguin. But not so much Penguin, but I like how he looks. But I never liked that. You could probably beat up the Penguin real easy. But I like the Joker. Joker's always my favorite. And Clayface, and I and I love Killer Croc. I love the big monster, big guys. I like guys who are like the Hulk and the Thing. They're just big and they fight. I like Juggernaut. I like Colossus. I like uh, Killer Croc. I like these big guys who fight, who just want to tear things up and knock doors down. That's what they went wrong with Killer Croc in that movie, that um, Suicide Squad movie. He didn't do anything. He was sleeping and he wore a hoodie and he was dumb. Like, I wanted to see him pick up a car, throw it, like, if they couldn't get in a building, how are we going to get in? He takes a car and throws it, let's get in. I just made a doorway. I wanted him to do something, but they're going to let me write a movie one day. You'll see. I'll just write my own movie. <laughs> we'll see. Casper says, Super Powers was also good, but Superman Family was a little more grounded. Yeah, I agree. Um, Superman Family, I had a long... I had a long storyline for that. And Superpowers, um, I needed more books. I tried to, I had a long story for that too, but I needed more books. And it's hard to do a really cool story in six issues. And with Superpowers, I tried to make them connect to issue to issue, to issue but it was it turned into like a, a villain per issue book. But I liked the part of the little baby growing up to be, uh, Superman Prime, and that was a character that didn't exist in DC until I, me and Franco put him in there, and I like Superman Prime, and I like that Superman Prime goes to the future to become the unknown Superman, so I love all that, that was real cool, but I wish I had at least 12 issues to really flesh out that story really well, and, but I knew that, I had a feeling that was going to be the last mainstream, uh, mainstream monthly book I was going to be able to do and I was right and I don't mind doing the books now but they're more um, uh, the graphic novels are more done in one kind of things 
And Superman of Smallville is a really fun story. I really like that because it's self-contained. But I have four more books written for Superman of Smallville. And if I ever get to do a, do them, uh, that's going to be a real fun story. I'll, I'll collect it all together when you read all four in a row. But I don't have... I have plans to do four, but DC Comics did not give me the go-ahead. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know yet. We'll see how it goes. And then Bixby says he loves them. Dust till dawn. Tarantino and Rodriguez together. Yeah. Wasn't that you in the starring role? It was. Josh Clooney. Yeah. That was when I had a face tattoo. But yeah, I like... Um, Dust till dawn was okay. I, w I was good with that movie. Even the creepy vampire stuff. See, I like vampires. I love... Um, I love that Anne Rice movie with Tom Cruise. Interview with the Vampires. One of the best vampire movies Well, that I, I like... I love Bram Stoker Dracula movie with Gary, Gary Oldman. See, I like that kind of stuff. I like it. It's just good. And it's so good when you watch these vampires. You want to become a vampire. But then you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to. You know, so it's just really good. Those are good movies. That interview with the vampires, one of the best vampire movies of all time. According to me. I don't know if that's the truth. So in that case, swig for the working man. Scott Casper says, in the initial appearance, the Penguin was equally tough with Batman. Over time, he was made more into a comic relief. He was made weaker. Yeah, he, now he's a short, fat guy. But yeah, he was uh, he was like Al Capone, like a crime boss at first. And he was based off of a, a pack of cigarettes or something. There was a character on a pack of cigarettes or something like that. And they just, uh, Bob Kane just drew that in the book. But that's how it was then. Even the Joker's based off that character from the other movie, The Man Who Laughs. So he would borrow stuff. But comics in the 40s and the 50s were such throwaway ideas. But they were selling millions of copies to army guys and kids. And people were buying them and reading them. And they were selling them. So they just kept putting more and more ideas. And then eventually people would write letters and say, hey, we like this Joker character. So they bring it back. Because I think the Joker died in his first appearance. I think he got killed. So he's been uh, back ever since. Let's see. Garrett says, My brother loves how each Superman Family Adventures comic started. Meanwhile, in the far reaches of space. Yeah. <laughs> I love starting my stories like that. Um, I do that all the time. And a lot, I did that in Gilbert number one, too. Gilbert number one started in space. Powers and action started in space. And... I just love that because anything can happen from there. It's like a story element where anything can happen. It's kind of cool. Deep Breath says, your website is fun. Let's let's check out. I ordered Gilbert 1 and 2. Yeah, man. I uh, I got your order. And they're going to be the hardcover books because I don't have soft covers. But um, I feel bad because the postage is so much. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a lot more extra things in your box. So uh, you're going to get a nice... Uh, you're going to get a nice package this week. I'm packaging up the... I actually packaged up some packages today. I had to fill up some eBay stuff and get it out there. And um, some website orders. So yours is in there, sir. It's going to be fun. You're going to like it. Gilbert's really fun. Eric Mark is on a... Are the coffee mugs one-sided? Yes. They have one side. See, the other side is black. They're cool, though, if you want to represent all your comics. And this is the 15-ounce mug. They got shorter ones, too. But I like the. I like this size. Holds more coffee. Swig for the working man. I gotta get an electric milk one, but the the um, my site just went up two days ago. It actually went up, I think, um, Saturday night or Sunday morning, and it's cool, man. I got my own designs on there and stuff. Oh, and the uh, the electric milk mugs are available on my artbaltazar.threadless.com. So it's in the link. The link is in the in this video, in the description above, with the title. And D. Brad says, "Awesome, thanks, man." Yeah, D. Brad, you're awesome. No sweet. Garrett says, "One of my favorite books you have made is Itty Bitty Mask." Oh, thanks, man. Itty Bitty Mask was so much fun. That might be Itty Bitty Mask and Grimace Island. Might be the two weirdest and most fun books that I've ever got to work on. Because with the mask, 
the creator of the mask, Mike Richardson, who's the owner of Dark Horse Comics, he emailed me and asked me if I would do a mask version, like Itty Bitty Hellboy. I want to know if I could work on the mask. Because at the time, it was the 20th anniversary of the movie with Jim Carrey. And he said, tell me what happens next after the movie with the mask. But I couldn't use Jim Carrey or any of the characters. I had to just talk about the, the mask itself, the wooden mask. What happens next with the mask? And so I created a whole bunch of new characters to go with that story. And the beginning of the book ends up where the mask is in an antique store. But like a weird, like a witchcrafty kind of voodoo place that had all of these artifacts for old old magical things and like you have stink stink bombs and trick it was like a trick store and herman shazbert who was the zookeeper bought the mask for an anniversary present for his wife he thought his wife would like it <laughs> so so i thought that was kind of cool and herman shazbert you would think he's going to be in a new jim carrey but he doesn't get the mask. He doesn't wear the mask to issue four. So issue one, the grandma wears the mask. And issue three, or issue two, the zoo animals wear the mask. And issue three, the mayor of the town wears the mask. And issue four, finally Herman Shazbert wears it. And I really liked that story. It was really fun. And I got to use a lot of crayon in the book. And that was one of the first books where I used crayon as a background. Now I've been doing it a lot. But... It's cool, and um, Drew and Jot, my book Drew and Jot, is most, mostly entirely drawn, colored in crayon, so it's kind of fun. But that was a, such a fun book. And um, let's see what um, people are saying. D. Brad says, awesome, thanks. Oh, yeah, man. Eric says, do you have the Oya oh, yeah, design mug available? Yeah, the Oya oh, yeah, Comics mug. This mug is available on oyacomics.threadless.com. So it's two different stores. I have an Art Baltazar store, which is me, famous cartoonist, and we have an Oya Comics store. So there's two different stores. And um, there's a link, well, somewhere. There's a link on oyacomics.com to go to Threadless. Or it's oyacomics.threadless.com for this mug. Or you can buy the electric milk mug off of my shop. So we're trying to keep uh, the Oya oh yeah, Comics has all the Action Cat stuff, and my shop has all of the other cool stuff. Like I'm gonna upload a Vinx T-shirt today, probably right after this, probably this afternoon. I'll put that up there. You guys are awesome. It's week for the working man. Well, I'm starting to get Luke Skywalker warm here, guys. You guys had a lot of good questions for me today. So just make sure you go to my sites. I got my links. It really helps me because I'm selling um, books now. I got a lot of books on my own website. I got um, I got new Drew and Jot on my website for sale. I got the first two Gilberts. I got Powers in Action up there. And I got the whole Encounter series, all issues 1 through 10. And they're on my site, arpaltazar.com. You can click on there and go to my store and buy stuff. And uh, I'll ship it to you. I, make, I send you drawings. You can buy books from me. I'll send you drawings. I'll send you free stuff. And on my Threadless site, there's t-shirts. I can't wait to see who the first one to wear one of my designs is going to be. And it's cool. I got one of my face. I got one of RDB. I got Abraham Linkage up there. I got Electric Milk. I got some drawings that my kids did. It's real fun. And Chris Brown is here. Is that the Chris Brown? He's kind of awesome. So you have an idea for the Super Pet books. In the 1960s, Batman had a gorilla named, named Mogo. Maybe you can make him. Yeah, he was the um, the Bat Gorilla. They actually put him in the um, in the Brave and a Bull cartoon. You see Mogo was in there wearing a Batman mask. Sweet for the working man. Casper says, should I get my stimulus check this week? <laughs> oh, you should get it. So maybe I'll finally get to start buying stuff again. Thanks, man. Spy gang. Yeah, you should, man. That'd be cool. See you later, Scotty Casper. You're a good man. You're awesome, my friend. Chris Brown told me that. The Chris Brown. But I'm going to get going because I'm going to get a refill. I have to do some things. I have to finish filling some orders. I have to answer an email that's very uh, important. And um, 
I have to try to finish up this Archimaniacs book and Gilbert number three and <laughs> Drew number two. I got to do this stuff, man. But thanks, everyone, for hanging out with me today. And thanks for following me and listening to me and drinking coffee with me. And It's cool. But um, keep doing what you guys are doing. Wake up every day and do stuff that makes you happy. And I will do the same. And um, you guys stick around. Maybe I'll do this again later. And uh, George, <laughs> George Clooney wears a dark turtleneck and Batman and Robin. Ocean Eleven, so he's famous. Yeah, see? He's coming up with the uh, famous cartoonist lifestyle. And thanks for the inspiration too, man. And um, be good to each other. I'll see you next time. Maybe I'll stream tonight. We'll see. In the meantime, be nice to each other. No crying. Okay, bye-bye.